What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. So this is a little different uh, point of view here, but what we're going to do today is I have the Mercedes down here in the shop. Um, if you haven't seen my shop tour yet, you can go over and click on the link in the uh, top right hand corner and check out the shop tour. So uh, there's that for you. And I'll wait till you come back. So one thing I had the Mercedes down here for was we're going to do a quick video on a brake pad wear sensor. So I recently got a fault for a brake pad wear sensor saying that your brake pads are low. These, uh, This is a C300. These brake pad wear sensors are on the passenger side of the vehicle. One in the front, one in the rear. So what we're going to go over is real quick on how to uh, where the brake pad sensor is, how to shoot it with a meter. You just need a standard simple meter. To, to figure it out and you can troubleshoot this to see if it's a if it's actually worn down to the point where it is uh, completely shot or if it's just something that uh, maybe in pre-existing wiring will save you a lot of money when it comes to the dealership. So if you take the car to the dealership and they say, oh, well, it's gotta be diagnosed or whatever, you, you can do this on your own. This is a simple procedure where you can replace the brake pads. Um, you can replace the, the wear sensor if it's if it's messed up. So um, my, my uh, wear sensor was messed up and the brake pad was still fine. So uh, it had just worn over time the little lead. We'll show you that in a second. And uh, um, it was just worn out, so it stopped reading and therefore tripped the uh, tripped the check light on the dash. So um, let's uh, change the camera angle. We're gonna jack up the jack up the car, take the wheel off, and I'll show you on the front caliper exactly uh, what it looks like and how we shoot it. So stand by. All right, now that we're over here on the side of the vehicle, we'll change the camera angle a little bit. I wanted to go over something real quick, and it's uh, keeping your vehicle clean. So. Now, does it affect it when you go into the dealership and you have a dirty vehicle with a bunch of brake dust all over your wheels? Do they care that it's dirty? I would, I would hope so. Um, some of the guys, the, the techs, they're just getting stuff everywhere. So you can just imagine the cross-contamination of a tech that doesn't wash his hands or uses the same gloves on everything. Uh, if you come in with a dirty vehicle that's nasty and heinous, how are they going to treat your vehicle? They're going to treat it like crap because it looks like crap. So um, on on the other end of the spectrum, when you're working on your own stuff, it's nice to not get dirt and crap all over your hands. So especially if you're, if you're uh, planning to do some maintenance on the wheels or around the wheel area, why not clean your car first so that it's not all over the place and you're just making a mess everywhere you go. So that's just my take on it. So if, you, if you've never taken a wheel off before, or it's one of your first times, totally understandable, um, you can uh, check out my video here in the upper right um, over uh, lug nuts and proper installation and removal, stuff like that. So in that video, I did go over a couple of tools that I use. Uh, I did not go over these nylon impact sockets. So this, these are nylon impact sockets from Harbor Freight. Uh, they're literally, they're uh, a impact socket with a nylon sleeve around it so you don't mar up your wheels. So they come in a big set like this. Hopefully you can see this great on the camera. So they come in a set, they have uh, one inch, seven eighths, 21, 13 sixteenths, and one and one sixteenth. And then this one is a 19, and then a 17 is the blue one. So I might do a small review video on this. Um, in, in the future, uh, I will put a link to a kit just like this. It's basically just rebranded. So this is from Harbor Freight. This is a Pittsburgh set. But I know that the ATD Tools is also uh, is the same exact kit. They just put a different sticker on the box. So I'll do a review on that um, sh soon, and you guys can check that out. Another thing I use is this extension. This is, I'm pretty sure it's a BDS uh, Technic extension. Uh, it, it has a handle on it so that you, know, you can spin the sock or you can spin the extension in your hand so you can hold it. And I've shown that in my other videos too. I'm gonna have to do a review on this thing too because it's pretty it's pretty awesome. I bought it on a whim and I've loved this thing. So let's go ahead and, and break these lugs loose. Let's get the uh, car up off the ground and we'll show you get into the sensor exactly how to shoot it and what it looks like.
All right, now that we have the car jacked up, one thing I wanted to mention is if you're messing with these aluminum alloy wheels and you're taking them on and off, you wanna be very careful to not drop this wheel onto the brake shield or the, cal or, or the rotor. These rotors are very big. Um, they're very close to the rim. They're only about you know, maybe an inch at most from the rim. So if you jack the car way up and you plop this up off the hub, then you can let it slam down onto the, the dust cover. There is an option you can get one of the uh, posts that thread into where the, where the uh, wheel fastener goes in and you can slide it out on that. But if you don't jack it up very far, then all you have to do is you can plop it down on the ground. If you jack it up enough that the wheel moves and it's, it's uh, off of the ground, then all you do is pop it, pop it off and it only drops you know, a, about a quarter of an inch. So let's go ahead and take these lug nuts off. All right, so what I did just there was pull it right off the hub and let it drop down on the concrete and it didn't go very far whatsoever. So now I can just take the wheel and I can just pull it out and roll it away. Too easy, just like that. All right, we're down here on the passenger side uh, front brake caliper. So what we're looking at is our brake pads wear sensor here, blue sensor head, and then it has some copper wires with some uh, clear plastic coating on them, and it goes to your outer brake pad. Um, on the back, the inner brake pad has the sensor in it, so it's just switched. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the same sensor. This thing unclips from your brake pad um, and, you know, goes through usually it comes as a full unit you'll have the sensor with the brake pad so I'm going to zoom in here and show you what you're looking at when you check brake pad thickness so hopefully this is in great focus so the, these metal tabs here are the backing plates to your brake pads so and then hopefully you can see this here this metal is the part of your actual brake rotor so as long as you have a big uh, a big pad thickness in between here and it's not really 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 worn out and thin then you have great pad thickness and you don't have you something's wrong with your sensor either the front or the back any uh, just one of them will throw the light so you need to check both the front and the back for pad thickness I do not recommend when you have a light happen like this. I do not recommend that you um, that you just check through the wheel and look at the front of the pad because the back inside of the pad can wear out faster than the outside of the pad. Just an inherent flaw in the design of how they work, but you you can wear out the inside pad faster than you wear the outside. So always take the wheel off to look at your pad thickness. So now let's take our sensor out. This sensor should measure a, uh, you know, just it's it's a loop. It's a wire loop. So as you can imagine, this wire goes in through here and loops back. Now, when your brake pads wear out, all it does is wear through this wire until it breaks. And then the uh, the computer is looking for a break in the signal. So it's going to send a voltage through here at all times. So it's going through and coming back. And then when they don't, and it doesn't get the signal back, that's when it will trip the light. So let's go ahead and take off this this sensor. Um, what I do is I'll just take a little piece of metal or something or a screwdriver and I'll pry up this tab a little bit and you'll see the pressure come off of the sensor as I pry up on it. And then you can just wiggle it out just like that. So as you pull this sensor out, you can see uh, there's some, there's some, uh, some moisture here but it's not past this green rubber o-ring. So this rubber o-ring keeps water from getting inside the sensor. So great stuff. Um, let's go ahead and shoot this with the meter and it should uh, measure basically no resistance whatsoever. It should be a, a straight loop. So let me zoom back out and we'll go over the meter real quick. All right, so I might be going over this little Barney style, but I want to um, set this up so that I can show you exactly what I'm looking at. So hopefully you can see exactly um, what's shown on the screen. Um, if not, I'll just re-record and show you. So this is a cheap Craftsman uh, digital multimeter. 
uh, you're going to want to set it on ohms or the omega looking symbol. You always want to set it on the lowest setting. This one goes to 200. So that means anything over 200 will display a 1 as uh, to signify an overload. So what you want to first check is to make sure that you know you have your two leads apart and then you put them together and you're going to get your baseline of what this thing measures. Okay, so we're right at about 1 ohm for the cables. So through the through the lead cables these are fluke cables that I have on this Craftsman multimeter, but I have about one ohm resistance through the leads. So pretty good. So one thing that I learned in the aviation world was you wrap 32,000 safety wire around the, the tip of your leads like this so you can shoot connectors just like I'm about to shoot. So, and we can, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. I'm gonna try to shoot one-handed to show you exactly what it gets on the, on the reading. So, we're going to take this out here like this, just bend the wire up. Um, as long as you don't manipulate it too much, you can't really hurt it. So, that 32,000 safety wire allows us to just plop it down there in the first lead. We're going to hang that there like that. Then we're going to take our second piece of 32,000s on our own. Okay, of course, the first time around when I recorded this, it had a bad glare on the screen. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to ohms 200. And then I'm going to put my my safety wire in here and we'll put it back in the other side so I can show you exactly what I was showing you before. And now we're measuring two ohms, so about uh, one ohm over uh, what we had before. So boom, just like that, 1.9 ohms. Um, depending on how you have it in here, it's going to read differently. Um, it's just just the difference between one and two ohms is is so small it's crazy but we basically have a good loop here and that's all she wrote so I wanted to just show that that uh, the screen a little bit better because it was washed out by the LED light so that's how that goes now if you put your leads in there and it shows an overload or no uh, no signal then you know that that brake pad sensor is bad even though we had good pad thickness so another way we could do this is you go over here to the diode setting. What this does is it has an audible beep so you know when the when it's connected. So it's basically sending a little a little uh, signal through, a little electrical signal. Um, I do not recommend using this on um, on circuit boards or anything like that, but we're not talking about that right now. So we'll put our lead in here just like we did before and we'll hang it and then when we put the lead on the second little terminal it should beep boom so now we know we have a complete circuit so if you're an audible audible sound kind of person that's what you can do so we have we have uh, determined that our brake pad sensor is good let's go ahead and turn that off so it stops beeping at us so now we just want to put reconnect our connector put it back in until it snaps and then I usually like to keep these wires out of the way, just tuck them up somewhere nice and easy like that. So now we've determined that the brake pad sensor is good and we can put the tire back on. So if you're troubleshooting it, there's how you troubleshoot brake, brake pad wheel sensor or a brake pad wear sensor on a Mercedes C300. Too easy. All right guys, I hope you like my video. If you like my content, go ahead and hit subscribe, smash that like button, because I need all the help out here I can get. I'm about to torque on the lug nuts or the wheel fasteners. If you haven't seen this snap, ang uh, snap on tech angle torque wrench, then you're wrong. You need to check up from the neck up. You need to go to this link up here in the top right and go check out this torque wrench review because this thing is sweet. So let's go ahead and torque my lug nuts and I, I will see you guys next video.